Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So if you are a DevOps engineer or an aspiring DevOps engineer planning to give interviews, CICD is one of the most anticipated topics that you will discuss in your interviews. And many times the question that interviewers will ask you is explain the CICD pipeline that you have implemented in your current or previous projects. Why? Because in your DevOps engineering job role, CICD is one of the critical components. So you should be really prepared for this. And many of our subscribers have been asking me that I have implemented the CICD pipeline. I have followed your videos, but I'm finding it difficult to explain during the interview about the CICD pipeline that I've implemented. So watch the video till the end, because in this video, I'm going to make it very simple for you to explain the interviewer, okay, this is the process that I've implemented. Always start with Git or any version control system that's based on Git. You can use GitHub, Git, GitLab or Bitbucket and you can choose your target platform as Kubernetes. So you will start saying the interviewer that we use GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket as our source code repository and our target platform is Kubernetes. So that tells the interviewer that, okay, you are trying to use a version control system and trying to implement the CI/CD on the target platform Kubernetes. Now, let's say there is a user who tries to make a code commit. Okay, the pull request is reviewed and then the code commit creates a commit in the version control system. For easy understanding, let's assume that is a GitHub repository. So user makes a code commit to a GitHub repository. Then we use an orchestrator the continuous integration, continuous delivery orchestrators like Jenkins. The reason for using the orchestrators is whenever there is a code commit to the Git repository, Git webhook triggers the pipeline in your orchestrator. Okay. So in this case, there is a Git webhook that triggers the Jenkins pipeline. Now what Jenkins does is the continuous integration part. Then there is continuous delivery part, which we'll cover later, but using Jenkins, you will implement the continuous integration as part of continuous integration. There are multiple stages. Okay. So start with the stage that is the checkout stage. So explain the interviewer that as part of the first stage in the Jenkins pipeline, we will check out the code. Now, what is the code that you are checking out the code commit that user has made? Okay, so you will check out the code commit that user has made. I mean, all the code along with that code commit. And then you will try to perform a build action along with the unit test cases. In the same stage, some people also perform static code analysis using some linting actions, formatting, but it depends upon your use case. You can say that we use Maven for building and we use the unit test cases in the code repository. If it is a Java application, if it is Node.js or if it is Python, then you can convert your unit testing framework and the build language accordingly. But let's assume that you are using a Java application. So you can say we check out the code in the first stage. Then we perform the build and unit testing in the second stage where we use Maven and we use the unit testing framework to test the unit test. And then once this is done, the build unit testing and static code analysis is done. Then you will move towards the code scanning as part of the code scanning. You can use some repositories like uh, sonar cube or you can use any self hosted uh, uh, sonar uh, solutions or you can use any code scanning solutions. Okay. And you will tell them that, okay, we will scan the code for any uh, security related vulnerabilities or even for the static code analysis in this uh, stage. Or you can also tell them that, you know, we perform some uh, security checks to ensure that our code is free from any securities. And in this stage, you will talk about sonar cube. After that, once this entire thing is done, you will move towards the image building. Okay. What you will do as part of image building. So because the target platform is Kubernetes, you will try to build a Docker image or a container image to be very specific. So let's not talk about Docker because some people might use Docker. Some people might use builder, but end of the day, you will create a container image in this stage for that. You will use the Docker file in the GitHub repository. Once the image is built, it is very important to perform the image scanning. What you will do as part of the image scanning, you will verify if the image that you have created has any vulnerabilities, right? So the binaries that you are using, the uh, default packages that you are using in the image or the base image itself, you have to verify that the base image and the overall image is free from any vulnerabilities. 
Finally, once this entire thing is done, you will push the image to your image registry. So the image registry can be Docker Hub or Quay.io, ECR. If you are on AWS, you can say that I'm using ECR as a registry or any, any other things, right? Now this is about the continuous integration. So you will say these are multiple stages that we have in continuous integration and we write Jenkins file in Jenkins for orchestrating each of them. Now, if the interviewer asks you, how do you write that? We use the declarative Jenkins pipelines. It is always good to go with the declarative Jenkins pipelines over the scripted, uh, scripted uh, Jenkins pipelines because scripted pipelines does not have more flexibility or does not have uh, you know, uh, by the means of flexibility in scripted pipelines, you can write your own code, but declarative pipelines are very easy to collaborate even with people who does not have enough idea on the scripting part, the groovy scripting part. Perfect. Now, once this is done, the image is pushed. Now, what is the next stage that you have? Like you have, there is a user who has committed the code. Then your Jenkins have triggered all of these things. The image is also created. Image is pushed to the uh, image registry that can be Docker Hub. Now, what will be the next step is to get this image onto your Kubernetes platform because this image has the new changes of your application. So to do that, some people use the same Jenkins pipeline that we have created and update this image in the Kubernetes YAML manifest. And, you know, you need to again push this updated image to a GitHub repository, which is hosting all of this Kubernetes manifest. In some cases, this can be the same repository as well, but it is ideally preferred to have a different GitHub repository. One is your source code repository that is here. And then you can have a different repository for storing your image manifest, or you can also store them as Helm charts, customize any of the different things. Better to go with plain manifest or Helm charts. And like I told you, some people keep the Git repository common uh, for the source code and image manifest. If you feel that is easy, you can say that using the Jenkins, same Jenkins pipeline, we update the Git repository with the image that we have created in the last stage of the CI, that is image push stage. Now, once this is done, your image is created, your GitHub repository is updated with the image manifest, the Helm chart is updated with the values.yaml, any of the things, then you have the final stage where you use Argo CD or any GitOps tool such as Flux CD, better to go with the GitOps approach if you feel that you are not comfortable with GitOps. Okay, I'll tell you the solution. Watch the video till the end. But it is always preferred to go with GitOps solution. And what you will do is using Argo CD, you will deploy this new change onto the Kubernetes platform. How do you do that? Argo CD is continuously watching this Git repository, whether it can be this Git repository or Git repository uh, that you have used in the first case here, wherever you are pushing uh, the updated K8 YAML manifest, there you have to configure Argo CD to watch that Git repository and push the changes to the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so advantage of using GitOps is, you know, GitOps will make sure that Git is a single source of truth and any changes that is made to this repository is automatically pulled and deployed to Kubernetes cluster. Also, it has multiple other advantages like continuous reconciliation. Let's not go into the details of it. You can watch my GitOps playlist. Now, let's say that you find this entire GitOps thing complicated. You don't know about anything about GitOps. You can replace this with any scripting like Ansible, Shell scripts or Python scripts. So you can say that once the images once the updated uh, Kubernetes YAML manifest are pushed to the GitHub repository, what we do is as part of the same pipeline, we use a shell script using the kubectl binary or using the helm uh, command. We just push this new commit in the Git repository to the Kubernetes platform, right? So either go with Ansible or go with shell script or Python. In any ways you can push these things like the Helm chart onto the Kubernetes cluster. The advantage of using Ansible is if, if there are multiple platforms, like in this case, in this picture, I've shown only one Kubernetes cluster, but if there are 10 Kubernetes clusters, Ansible will make your life easy. If you know GitOps solution, go with GitOps solution because in GitOps, you can manage one or 10 or 100 Kubernetes clusters as well. Okay, so you can take uh, this diagram as a reference. You can use this same diagram. You can take a screenshot of, screenshot of it, write your own notes. But this is how you will explain the interviewer that once the user commits a code to a Git repository, then we use Jenkins as an orchestrator. 
which takes care of our continuous integration part using multiple stages. We use Jenkins Groovy scripting, where we use the declarative uh, Jenkins pipelines for writing multiple stages. And as part of it, the first stage is the checkout stage where we check out the code. The second stage is the build and unit testing. We also perform static code analysis in this stage. You can say that if required. Then we move towards the code scanning stage. And once the code scanning is done and if everything is fine, we will move towards the building of image. In this case, we are building a container image because the target platform is Kubernetes. Then we perform the image scanning to verify that the image built is safe from the security vulnerabilities. And finally, we push this image to the image registry. Once the image is pushed to the image registry, what we do is we take this new version of the image and we update the Kubernetes YAML manifest or we update the Helm charts, depending upon your use case, onto a Git repository. This Git repository can be a different one or the same one. And finally, we have a GitOps tool called Argo CD, which is watching for this Helm charts. Whenever there is a new version or a code commit that is made to this Git repository, it picks up the new commit, it picks up the new commit and deploys it onto the Kubernetes cluster. So this is the entire pipeline. How you explain? I hope you watch this. I mean, I hope. Sorry, I hope you enjoy the video. If you have any questions, put that in the comment section. If you want to talk anything related to it, yeah, definitely let me know that you know you are finding it difficult to understand a specific stage. I'll definitely make a detailed video on that as well. See you all in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye.